This video, The Notch, is the second in a series on tree felling. This module examines factors such as the angle, orientation, and depth of the cut, and what effect they are likely to have on the tree felling. The primary purpose of cutting a notch is to begin the process of creating a hinge, which will prevent the tree from falling sideways. Essentially, all notches are formed by the intersection of two cutting planes. Beyond that fact, notches can vary widely. They can vary in the depth to which they extend into the trunk. They can vary in the angle at which the two planes approach each other. They can vary in the orientation of the notch. We'll examine each of these parameters. It is possible, but not advisable, to fell a tree without establishing a good hinge for directional control. The hinge needs to have a certain minimum length to be effective. That minimum length is probably about half the diameter of the tree. That length can be obtained with a notch depth that is only 7% of the diameter. However, the commonly recommended minimum hinge length is 80% of the trunk's diameter. That works out to a notch depth equal to 20% of the trunk's diameter. The recommended notch depth is often around 30%. The theoretical maximum depth of a notch is probably around 75% of the diameter, but cutting to such a depth would be risky, wasteful, and otherwise inappropriate. Cutting to a depth of 50% of the diameter should be taken as the practical maximum. A number of factors should be considered when you select a depth of cut for your notch. One of the most important arises if you determine that you will have to drive a wedge to get the tree to fall towards your notch. In that case, particularly if you have a medium to smaller diameter tree, you may need to reduce the depth of your notch cut, provide adequate space for your back cut, and a wedge to work properly. Without that constraint, there are relatively minor factors to consider. The shallower the notch is cut, the easier it is to make sure that the two planes intersect properly. However, with the shallow cut, the center of gravity of the tree will be farther from the hinge, and it will be harder for a wedge to lift the mass of the tree to get it to fall. This can be particularly important with big trunks that your family or buddies are trying to pull down with a rope. The deeper the notch is cut, the easier it is to get the tree to fall. For larger trees, the loss of support caused by cutting a deep notch can cause a well-balanced tree to begin straining in that direction. However, with a deep notch, it can be quite tricky to get the cutting planes to intersect correctly. Also, more cutting is required for those two planes. Let's move on to consider the angle of notch cuts. The angle determines how far the tree can lean before the notch closes and the hinge goes completely into tension. When that happens, the hinge will either fail, allowing the tree to continue falling, or the hinge will hold. If the hinge holds, the tree will either stop falling or the trunk will split. At a minimum, the angle of the notch cut should be wide enough to ensure that the tree continues to fall, even if the hinge has to snap. That minimum angle will be a function of the angular momentum that the tree has developed and of the strength of the hinge. When a tall, heavy tree has fallen through as little as 15 degrees, it will have enough momentum to rupture a normal hinge when the notch closes. Medium-sized trees may have to fall through 25 degrees to rupture a hinge, while a small tree may have to fall through 35 or more. 
there are at least two reasons for not using those minimum values. The most commonly advanced is that the hinge must be preserved throughout the fall to properly direct the tree. As will be shown later in this series, however, this argument is pretty weak for hinge angles of greater than 45 degrees. If the tree does not have a significant side lean, once it has fallen through the minimum angle for its size, its direction of fall will be unlikely to change unless it strikes another tree. If the tree does have significant side lean, the hinge will be severely compromised by being bent through 45 degrees and will be unable to resist the force pulling the tree sideways. The second argument for not using a minimum notch angle is that once the notch closes and the hinge pulls apart, the broken hinge will rise above the step and the butt may be able to kick back off the stump. If the feller has not safely retreated, that kickback could produce severe injury or death. Fortunately, the conditions that would generate sufficient force to cause such a kickback are fairly uncommon. They will be discussed in the video on the hinge. If there is not a good reason for using a more acute notch angle, something like 70 degrees is appropriate for most situations. The third parameter, orientation, has the least influence on the felling process, but can affect timber utilization, convenience, and kickback prevention. This cut is called the Humboldt cut. It was developed in the American Northwest and is broadly used for harvesting large trees for lumber. With the orientation of the notch aimed downward, the cut facilitates sliding the cut wood out of the notch. That can be a significant consideration for large trees where the piece can be very heavy. A second benefit is that when the notch closes, the surface will provide a horizontal force component that will combat kickback. In terms of utilizing the butt log for lumber, the use of a horizontal top cut increases the amount of the log that can be used. While most modern mills use computers to maximize the amount of lumber that can be obtained from a given log, an inclined top cut for the notch will limit the length or width of the boards. At the other extreme of notch orientations is the open face cut. In this type of cut, the upward orientation of the notch is at a practical maximum. The primary advantage of this notch is that it is easy to make the cuts join along the axis desired for the hinge. Because the first cut is so steep, it is easy to tell what direction is normal or perpendicular to the face. For the bottom cut, it is easy to see when the saw is horizontal so the cut can be started. It is also easy to see when the bottom cut has intersected the top cut. An occasional advantage of the open face cut may arise when the saw blade is short in comparison to the diameter of the trunk. This notch may allow the body of the saw to be pushed in past the face of the trunk, allowing the saw to reach farther into the trunk than a bird's mouth cut would. As we will see in the video on the hinge, this kind of plunge cut may be made through the middle of the hinge without significantly compromising its effectiveness. There are two minor quibbles to the open face cut. First, it requires more cutting than a horizontally oriented notch. For a 70 degree notch, a bird's mouth notch would require 70% less cutting. Second, cutting that high into the butt log reduces the amount of lumber that can be obtained and results in a tiny reduction in the volume of wood when harvesting for pulp. The tree felling I do is exclusively for firewood or simple removal. That kind of work does not require a great deal of precision for the notch cut. The angle can be from 50 to 90 degrees. 
and the depth from 20 to 50 percent of the trunk's diameter. The one aspect that deserves some precision is the direction of the intersection of the two cuts. A line drawn horizontally and perpendicular to this intersection should be less than five degrees off from the desired direction of fall. Two final notes on cutting notches. The corners of the notch should not overshoot their intersection. If this occurs, the hinging action will be moved to the end of the cut and, once the tree begins to lean, the cut will close and the hinge will go into tension rather than bending. It will then be possible for the tree to stop falling. However, it is not necessary for the planes of the notch to come together sharply at a point. If the notch is broken out, there may be a slight vertical face at the apex. If this occurs at the corners of the notch, it will function to increase the height of the hinge, which is a good thing, allowing it to flex more before it breaks. However, it is not desirable for the intersection to be incomplete near the middle of the width of the hinge. In that position, it will function as a fulcrum when the tree begins to lean. In that case, the corners of the hinge will go into tension rather than bending. As the tree begins to fall, the corners of the hinge will tear, and the hinge will no longer be able to resist side lean. This problem can usually be easily addressed by making a bit of a plunge cut through the middle of the hinge. Further details and an explanation are included in the video Engineering Principles of the Hinge.